Welcome to the Mr. My Channel. By the time this video is released, it'll probably be titled with the borderline clickbait, Tomorrow 37N, Fromer's High Power. In my Kalishnikov biography and Breda 1934 videos, I quoted Schwagen, complexity is easy, simplicity is difficult. Fromer had a penchant for making reliable, although complex pistols, and the 37N seems almost too simple to bear his name. The reason I compare it to the High Power is the pistol was adopted after his death, and there is speculation that others at FEG had more to do with the pistol than the man himself. Kind of like Dudenay's save should garner more credit for the finished high power than the man whose name it bears, John Moses Browning. Something I covered in my high power videos. Rudolf Fromer was born on August 4, 1868 in Budapest. He grew up and was educated as a banker. During his formative years, Hungary was part of the dual monarchy Austro-Hungarian Empire, where Austria and Hungary were supposed to be equals under one ruler. This wasn't the case as Austria seemed to always take precedence since they were more industrialized while Hungary was more agrarian. Although the empire encompassed several languages and religions, they did have a common military. Austria and Hungary both had home defense forces, the Landwehr for the Austrians and the Honvedseg for Hungary. It is likely thanks to the separate home forces that both Austria and Hungary had separate arms industries. The main Hungarian company was, and I will likely butcher this pronunciation, Fegver S. Gepvar, or Arms and Machine Factory, known here on out as FEG. Although small arms were the main focus of FEG, they also made gas equipment and water heaters and even bought out rice to produce diesel engines in 1899. From my very surface level research, I'm not sure if they overextended themselves, but FEG was in some financial hardship in the late 1890s. As a banker, Farmer was hired by FEG in 1896 to straighten the financial situation out. By 1898, he found another calling as he started to dabble in weapons design. By 1901, he had registered his first patent for the M1901 a long recoil stripper clip fed pistol. It can be forgiven for looking like an odd duck as it was roughly the first decade of auto feeding pistol design. This pistol didn't see much success in trials versus its Austrian counterparts but did have a fighting chance in Sweden who would end up passing up on it because it was a stripper clip fed instead of detachable magazine fed. The 1906 update added a detachable magazine which has been claimed that some little known German pistol borrowed. The 1910 was the final iteration of the 1901 design adding a grip safety. This is the most successful of the 1901 based pistols and was adopted by the Gendarmerie. By this time Frommer had risen to a business director of FEG. He designed a long recoil semi-auto rifle that fired the 8x57mm round in 1910, but the bulk of his attention still remained with pistols. In 1912 he released his most famous pistol yet, the Frommer Stop. This was a new take on long recoil as it had a double spring system, one controlling the movement of the bolt while the other absorbed barrel recoil. The springs were placed in a tunnel. This complicated maintenance, but it made the pistol more compact and it was able to fire hot ammo. The 7.65 by 17 mm Fromer Long was a hot loaded 32 ACP and the Fromer 9 mm was a hot loaded 380 ACP. In the United States, there's a common cal caliber pissing contest between the 9mm guys and 45 guys, with the 45 or die crowd touting, my stopping power, between yelling something about two-time World War champs. Well, this pistol was literally named the Stop, to brag about its ability to stop a target. Frommer was given noble status by Franz Joseph in 1914, the same year that saw him elevated to factory director, his position until retirement in 1935. The stop was adopted by the Hohenwedseg and exported to other central power nations during the Great War. 
Although used throughout the Great War, the stop became properly designated as the 19M since this is when the new independent Hungary officially adopted it. Fromer made the baby stop aimed at the civilian market as a pocket pistol. The baby proved to be expensive to mass produce, so in 1921, Fromer designed a pistol that was his first to go away from long recoil and delve into simple blowback named the Lilliput. This pocket pistol fired the 6.35 by 17 millimeter Fromer, which was a hot 25 ACP. From afar, this looks a lot like a Colt 1908 vest pocket. The Lilliput laid the foundation for the 29M, which was an enlarged version that fired the normal 380 round. The 29M was much more practical than the stop and was adopted by the military, while the gendarmerie and the police stayed with the stop. Simple blowback with an external hammer and the barrel held in by four locking lugs, this was much simpler to field strip. Here we finally get to the pistol I own, the Femaro Fegever S. Gever 37M. The name of the company added Femaro or metalware in 1939, the same year Fromer retired. Fromer would die in 1936 and the pistol would be adopted in 1937. So how much input he had into simplifying the 29M is unknown from surface level research. I have seen some sources say his influence was limited, so this is where my earlier comparison to the Browning and High Power come in. Browning started designing the pistol with Dudenay Save, but there were some major differences between the pistol at his death and the one that was finally put out there for trials, and in reality Browning's name thrown on the pistol to make it more desirable, even though Save likely did most of the development work. The difference here was the 37M was a simplification of the 29M and not a class creating new pistol. The 37M removed the pin cocking grips at the rear of the slide, making it so the pistol could be field stripped without tools, or at the very least a punch. Hungarian 380 ACP 37M pistols had only the 1911 style grip safety, while the German contract 37M pistols were chambered for 32 ACP and have a manual safety. Most of the German contract 37M pistols ended up with Luftwaffe pilots. The magazine adds the pinky extension which helped your grip immensely while shooting. One of my sources for this video has a rundown of the serial numbers. There was a C prefix trial run in 1937, and 1938 starts out production with the number 50,000. The cool thing about mine is that it's 50,005, which makes it a very early gun. Mine came with three magazines and an original holster, and I got it for a very good price, especially in today's market. Shooting the 37M was fun since I actually had extra magazines. It is well balanced and feels almost browning like in shooting. The pinking extension on the magazine is a nice touch, although it would get annoying if I were ever desperate enough to try to conceal carry it with a modern holster. The heel release is hideous and does not make for a quick magazine reload. I question that although it is a semi-auto, it would give you much advantage over a revolver with moon clips when it comes to a quick reload. To again blatantly rip off CN Arsenal, would I take it to war relative to its peers? My answer is, meh. There are certainly worse handguns out there, the Japanese offerings being a prime example. I would take it over a Luger for re reliability reasons, and over any revolver. If you put it on a table with a P38, 1911, Tokarov, or Beretta 1934 though, it'd be by far my last choice. Let's not even get into the Viz 35 or High Power. I guess my answer would be the Derry from Letterkenny softest birthday party of soft yeses. Please be aware where your elected officials and the groups that claim to represent you stand on the Constitution. Please join the GOA and use my link for 25% off your membership. And no, I do not receive a kickback from this. If you like my content, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also check out my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and who I support on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.